sleep is a very real factor in optimizing your performance. I think mm -hmm. people understand that at a base level, but I don't think they understand it enough to be able to implement it day to day. And some of the metrics I think really show that. The United States has all sorts of terrible sleep habits. Yeah. Starting at age 13 or 14 mm -hmm. is when we usually start a behavior of under rest, of yeah. under sleep. And it's, it affects high school students, it affects mm -hmm. college students, and we carry it on into our adult years. Mm -hmm. Did you know over 70% of Americans actually sleep with a pet? Oh, that makes sense. It makes sense. Is As an bad? American in culture, <laughs> it's horrible. Oh, really? Because every movement your pet makes rouses you out of whatever well, level of sleep true. that you're in. Yeah. And there's four levels of sleep. There's mm -hmm. non-REM sleep, stage one, two, and three. Yeah. And then there's REM stage sleep, mm -hmm. which is your, your fourth stage of sleep, right? Mm -hmm. So three levels of non-REM sleep, mm -hmm. one level of REM sleep. Mm -hmm. And that REM stands for rapid eye movement. We've all heard that a thousand times. Right. So when your pet moves, mm -hmm. it bumps you down whatever slot you're in. Mm. Plus, you're doing it to yourself whenever you move, whenever... A bird goes off whenever a freaking a smoke detector runs out of batteries. Yeah. Those are all things that move you down the ladder of sleep mm -hmm. when you need to be moving up the ladder of sleep. Yeah. So as bad as the United States is, we're actually not even the worst country in the world. You know what some of the worst countries in the world are for sleep? No. Just guess. Just guess. Third world countries where it's too hot to sleep. <laughs> That might be true, but nobody's- but they weren't studied. Nobody's running studies of third world countries. That's exactly right. <laughs> um, so first world countries, UK? UK's bad. UK's, I think, the fourth worst rested country on the planet. Germany? Germany's like pretty well rested. I know. I was saying they like their vacation. Most of Europe is actually very well rested with a few exceptions. I'm not sure. You have to tell me. So the worst rested country in the world is Japan. Oh, yes. That makes a lot of sense. It they makes... actually have those little pod beds for the office workers that, you know, you can go and take a nap, <laughs> take a nap in so, the tiny pod. So as yeah. bad as they are at getting a full night's sleep, yeah. they're one of the best in the world for napping. <laughs> for exactly that reason, because it's culturally acceptable. It's actually yeah. considered respectful and a compliment to mm -hmm. both the company and the individual to sleep on the job. So what is the science behind napping? Because I've found that as I get older and as the kids get older, I still have my days where my body is like, I'm just going to shut down. I need, you know, 30 minutes to an hour. I'm going to go lay down. And something I've learned that has been really beneficial to me is I'm, I always thought of myself as not a good power napper. I, it takes me some time to fall asleep. Mm. But if I just lay down, whether or not I fall into a deep sleep or not, doesn't seem to matter. It's the rest itself. My eyes are closed. My mind is blank. I'm just laying there, whether I fall asleep or not. So what is the science on recouping your energy you know, and, yeah. you know, through napping. So remember how we were saying there's three stages of non-REM sleep? Yeah. So there's two, there's different kinds of naps, mm -hmm. right? There's the naps like you see in Latin America. Right. Siestas, siesta. which is like a two and a half to three hour nap. Yeah. Right. And then there's the naps that you see across Asia and mm -hmm. through parts of Europe, which are much shorter naps, mm -hmm. right? 15 right. to 30 minute naps. So the difference between the two naps is really what level of sleep you get to. All rest is rejuvenating. Stage one of non-REM sleep is when you just start to slow your heart rate. Mm -hmm. You start to uh, increase your body temperature. Mm. You start to just relax your muscles, right? Mm -hmm. That is rejuvenating, much more rejuvenating than being engaged and being intellectual. Mm -hmm. Stage two is when you actually start to move from that state of alertness, but relaxation into a state of relaxed, distant alertness, mm -hmm. right? Before you move into the third phase, which is basically like you're, you're drowsing, you're, you're dozing, yeah. you're drowsy, you're actually asleep, but you're not necessarily in a deep rest yet. And then of course, REM sleep. So when you've got your siestas that last two to three hours, they're actually going all the way into REM state mm -hmm. sleep. The full cycle. The full cycle. Yeah. Whereas your nap, what we traditionally consider a nap in the West, mm -hmm. is a much shorter term thing. So it's actually just there for physiological benefits. And this, I think, gets to the heart of your question. Mm -hmm. When you take a nap, 15, 20, 10, 7 minutes, whatever it might be, you feel energized 
but you don't necessarily feel optimized. Mm -hmm. You don't feel sharp necessarily. Mm. You don't feel focused. You just feel like, oh, okay, I can keep going. Yeah. Right? I can make it to the nighttime. <laughs> I can make it. Yeah. I can make it. Yeah. So what's happening there is that your brain, the brain only has two stages. Mm. It has a learning or absorbing stage, and then it has an indexing stage. Yeah. The two things the brain can do. It can either learn or it can index information that it has learned, but it cannot do both things at the same time. Mm. And it can't do neither thing either unless it's, it's not a neurotypical brain. Right. So while you're awake or while you're in a level of alertness, stage one, non-REM sleep, you're still in alert alertness, mm -hmm. you're learning. That learning means that you're not indexing what you've learned in the past. Mm -hmm. In order to have creative thought, in order to have like problem solving and ideas, you need to be able to index yeah. what you have learned. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it so that your brain can do what it does and all the neural links get creative. Once you move into stage two and stage three non-REM sleep, now you've shut off the learning and your brain is actually indexing the information that's learned throughout the day. Hmm. What's wild, though, is that when REM kicks in, that's actually your brain being very awake and alert again. Interesting. But the reason the, the world that your brain is living in during REM sleep is all within your brain. It's all within the indexed information of your brain, right. which is why dreams can seem so real, mm. but they're also wonky. Mm -hmm. They're creative. Right. So your brain, it's similar in terms of energy and electrical inputs and electrical energy right. to when you're awake but you're actually asleep. And that's what creates all the dreams. So what CIA taught us yeah. is that if you are going to rest, mm -hmm. choose whether you are resting for physical reasons mm. or for mental reasons. If you're resting specifically to benefit the brain, yeah. you need to give yourself at least enough time for a full REM cycle. So it's a minimum of 80 minutes, target 90 minutes. Uh, if it's more than 110 or 120 minutes, you start getting to the place where you're sleeping too much. Yeah. I'll explain that in a second. So your optimal time for a, a periodic rest, mm -hmm. according to CIA, when you're in the field and you can't take, you can't sleep yeah. for like nine hours, yeah. is somewhere between 80 and 110 minutes. Mm. That gets you a chance to go through all three stages of non-REM sleep into REM sleep where your brain is indexing what it's learned, yeah. optimizing, and entering into REM rest, which is the deepest state of rest and connecting disparate ideas. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to do if you're resting for your brain. If you're resting for your body, anything, from, anything less than 90 minutes is essentially fine. Yeah. You just have to understand which level of non-REM sleep you're gonna to get to without letting yourself get to REM sleep. Because if you let yourself get to REM sleep and you don't give yourself enough time for REM sleep, then you run the risk of an alarm going off or something waking you yeah. from this deep rejuvenating yeah. slumber. So you wanna stay in that place where you're kind of dozing, fading, or lightly sleeping.